This week we're going to cap off our Midwest tour before we go home to the families for Thanksgiving. We're going to be hitting the Sunflower State. We're going to Kansas. A state that's motto is to the stars through difficulties. So I think we can all agree we need to help Kansas think up a different state motto. Can't say that Virginia's is any better. Virginia is for lovers. That's super weird. Our motto for Kansas this year could be through great difficulties over many states of not filling tags. Yeah, we have zero buck kills except Josh killed a nice one at home. At this point in the season, we've hunted Montana, Kentucky, Ohio, Illinois, and I've yet to notch a single buck tag in any of those states. And I've had deer, 110, 115 inch, 125 inch deer all over top of me this year. And I, every time I do, I'm on a place where I'm not allowed to shoot them. I'm not saying we hadn't had an opportunity to shoot a buck. In fact, I passed on a lot of bucks that I'd have rode around with the tailgate down in my hometown and been really proud of. I'm a redneck from Virginia. You people know that. And I just want to shoot something. I'm like old Ted Nugent and Fred Eichler and some of my other bow hunting guys I look up to. Well, here we are in the third week in November, and I'll be daggone if I'm coming back to the house without any antlers for my little girls. I promised them I'd bring them home a buck, and that's exactly what we're going to do in Kansas. And where better to attempt to do that than Dragon Slayer Outfitters? We're excited to be here. This is a good little spot. I'm excited. I'm going to sit down and shut up, and hopefully the deer will start moving through here. And as someone once said, the fat lady might not have sung yet, but she's tuning up. My feet and legs have never been shaking so hard in my life. I think it's because I hadn't shot a deer in four weeks. You know, Dragon Slayer Outfitters is pretty special to me for a lot of reasons. One being that it's run by two of the nicest people, Rob and Susan. Also, my good buddy B-Dub from South Georgia that we go turkey hunting with every year runs all the deer hunts. That's pretty cool. That's how you guys start waking hunters up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's time to go hunt, guys. <laughs> so that brings me to my next most favorite thing about Dragon Slayer Outfitters is last year I killed an absolute freak of a deer, possibly one of my biggest, definitely my freakiest. I ain't good, did I? I, I just saw blood immediately. It's frozen. That blood is completely frozen. Woo! You gotta be kidding me. Oh. I didn't have any idea he was that good. I didn't have any idea he was that good. This was really cool because I was the first one that had an opportunity to hunt this place after it became an outfitter. So this deer was the first deer ever killed at Dragon Slayer Outfitters. It wasn't like a long hunt either. That's the thing usually when you think about a tough hunt, you think about three, four, five, six, two weeks, you know two days and we're done. So far this season, Dragon Slayer has had 100% success rate as far as shot opportunities. And I was really wanting to keep that streak alive and lay down one of these big old Kansas bucks. Like I said before, I've been chasing bucks for about a month now, passing on a lot of deer. It's kind of like the fourth quarter of a football game at this point. We just need to put an end to this game. If you know what I mean, huh? Right? Some end game? Sorry. That was bad. That was a shameless product plug. That'll be the first time we've really tried the old uh, end game. You attract them from Anderson. Out here in Kansas, you can put down the bait. Now, in game is a soybean, roasted soybean based long range deer attractant that is super good for your deer, has a high protein content. And on this particular hunt, in this little thicket, in this little ruddy area where all these does are running around, we're going to put some in game out by the tree stand and see if it won't draw in some of these does and in turn draw in some of these bucks that are chasing them. So, hate on me if you will, but I'm using all things necessary under the law to get some of these deer killed. <laughs> if you want to do a supplemental feeding, so it's kind of exciting to be able to feed the deer like that, really. And like all Anna King products, it's actually good for them. So we'll see how it works. Well, it's the first evening here in Kansas at Dragon Slayer Outfitters. My good friend Brian Watson, we just rolled into town from Illinois. We saw a big buck driving in here. 
It's a little bit warm, but we're excited to be here. This is a good little spot. Kansas, baby. I put out this bag of end game and then got up in the tree stand, and it didn't take long, and a doe was coming right to it. And just like I said, where there are does during the rut in Kansas, there will be bucks. Same two year old buck's been following us around every state this year for some reason. She had killed that doe, but I, I didn't want to shoot that doe and have her run off and flip out. And have a big buck be standing there looking at us, you know. But that was cool anyway. First night, had two deer in range. Second day in Kansas. Had a young buck come through yesterday. I know that a lot of the big bucks were hard to come by in the last couple of states we've hunted. All the little guys are chasing, but the big ones aren't quite ready yet or weren't. So maybe, uh, maybe we're hitting it just right. Well, we got back in the same set the next morning, and around 8 o'clock, a shooter buck comes rolling through. Well, this buck came to a fork in the road, and as Thoreau would say, he chose the road less traveled and headed up through the thicket and away from our tree stand. Dang, man. He's a good deer, real good deer. He was about to, if he stepped out, there's one little hole right there that I could shoot through, maybe. We decided to make a change for that evening. The guys that beat up had hunting in camp before us had been seeing some really good deer in this one little thicket. Well, it's a windy, Windy day here in the state of Kansas. Josh and I are up a tree in a little thicket, a little draw. We got a cut cornfield behind me. Big CRP out in front of me. B dub put two guys in the same tree last week. Both of them killed bucks. He said in this area they saw like six more shooters. But it's been gusting like 50 mile an hour winds today. Shoot around corners. We got a few turkeys moving through the woods over here. It's a good spot. I like it a lot. So hopefully with any luck, a great big old buck is gonna come by. Because we sure need it. I glassed an absolute giant that evening, only for a split second. And we saw a lot of deer activity, so based on that, we decided to come back to the same stand the next morning. It was just starting to crack daylight. Nothing was really on its feet, except a doe that was coming into 20 yards and was probably gonna get shot.
She didn't go anywhere, dude. That was awesome. Good job. We got this party started right this morning. We have had a rough hunting season. I mean, this hunting season has kicked us harder than Ronda Rousey got kicked in the head the other night. But we're making up for it, trying to have fun. It's a good way to start the morning. A cup of coffee and a double long dough. So about an hour after I shoot this doe, a three-legged deer with a real funky, messed up rat comes in, and um, he's just chilling at first, and then he tries to breed this dead doe. I can almost kill him right there, he's at 50 yards. But he can't par because he can't support his other leg, you know? So I'm in a bit of a dilemma. I was gonna give him a mercy killing. He's not what you come to Kansas for. But, I mean, I'm not a trophy hunter anyway. However, we are in the land of the giants, and as soon as I shoot that buck, I just know a 190 is gonna walk right under the tree stand. There you go, baby. I mean, just devastation. That must have got a lot of heart in it for her to bleed out that quick. To see the video, but that's what we like right there. That's, that means success is all that means. Yeah, we're out here in Kansas trying to get on a mature buck. Took out a great big old doe, and it was amazing. This this buck comes up to the woods. He's got three legs, and he's trying to breed this deer laying on the ground. He's trying to get her up so he can breed her. I don't want to mess this spot up. We're gonna get this doe out of here. I'm gonna show you the shot placement real quick. There's a shoulder blade and that bone structure comes down here like that and that's kind of what I call like the magic triangle. You put it right there and that's all the good stuff. Just right. And then right there, out right there. It's perfect. We'll hook this hunter safety system rope up to her and just drag her on out of here as quiet as we can. It's a little different when you're pulling a doe out of Kansas than when you're pulling one out of Virginia or Texas or somewhere like that. I got some large heifers out here. Well, I get back to camp and I clean up my dough, and my good buddy Ryan Langerhands drops by in camp. There he is. What's up? Oh, How's man. it going, man? Not bad, a lot of rain. Yeah. He's gonna be hunting with us for a couple days. Unfortunately, Ryan brought with him, well, besides Jamie Lovett, the cameraman, unfortunately, the other stuff he brought with him was rain and terrible luck and a complete shutdown of the deer activity. You know, the wind this week's been a huge factor. We got south wind. So we've had to kind of hunt some sketchy sets where the wind is sort of quartering at the deer. And this year, we've actually been using this product, which I'm pretty pumped about, the scent crusher bag, because you can set all your gear in it, push one button. Then in a couple minutes, all your stuff's scent free. Super easy to use. I got it plugged in the cigarette lighter right now. You just turn it on and then set your whatever time you want to leave it in there. And it actually pumps ozone into the bag. It gets all in your clothes and kills all the scent. For people who are lazy about scent control like I am, this is the perfect solution. Because not only can you put your clothing in here, I've got my bow release, my binoculars, my rangefinder, because all your straps and anything that comes in contact with your skin or your body is gonna smell like humans. So when the deer aren't coming down their normal travel lanes until after dark and things are really slow, Sometimes you gotta get aggressive and just get up in the thicket. So we eased up into this thicket. Scrapes just ripped up through there, rubs, everything, all kind of deer sign. The deer are definitely bedding really close to where we're at and they're doing some rutting. Our best shot of the trip was gonna be to hunt this the remaining time that we're in Kansas, which isn't very long at this point. Our ticket home is lurking around in these woods somewhere and we need to put I'll beam an arrow through his lungs, drag him to the ram and go home. He's gonna walk right out of his feeders, and I'm gonna shoot him right here at 15 yards. So this time of the morning, it's so dark still that a deer is gonna have to be 20 yards or less for me to shoot it. There's a pup, there's a pup.
Well, as my boy Ryan Langerhans from the Buck Commander would say, he gone. <laughs> my feet and legs have never been shaking so hard in my life. I think it's because I hadn't shot a deer in four weeks. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna throw up and I have so much adrenaline. We hadn't, one, we hadn't seen one of those in a while, Josh, that has passed through a, a good buck. Y'all ever see that movie Benjamin Button with Brad Pitt in it? Well, that's exactly what happened to this deer because he went from being like a four or five year old 140 inch deer when I shot him and at the end of the blood trail, for some reason, he, he turned into a, uh, a two year old 110 inch deer. That regressive Benjamin Button. <laughs> Let's see. That'll work. You know, we finally got it done in Kansas and it's one of those things where, you know, we just hadn't killed a deer in so, so long. And I'm not a trophy hunter, man. I'm, I'm tickled to death with this 10-pointer. And more than anything else, I like going back to the house successful with some deer meat. And, uh, and I'm proud to take this old buck back to Virginia right here. Now what we got to do is figure out how to surprise the guys. Well, man, we had a heck of a week at Dragon Slayer Outfitters. We didn't slay any dragons, more like a lizard, but he'll still eat good. However many inches he is, is as many inches he's going to grow. <laughs> if you walk out in front of me when I'm hungry, it's, that's what happens. So that, that back strap's gonna taste a lot better than that tag would have. Yeah. That tag's hard to marinate. You yeah. know what I mean? Soak it a long time. It took a long time. It takes same a lot of the, olive oil and same, Italian dressing to get that thing tasting good. It does, same with the horns. And we had a great time with Rob and Susan, and Brian had a ball with my buddy Ryan Langerhans from the Buck Commander, and our good friend, cameraman Jamie Lovett. And you know, it was just a great time, man. We, we hung around the fire, we had a good time, despite tough, rainy conditions. We had a ball at Dragon Slayers and I can't wait to go back this fall.